Hi, I'm Aaron Payne. I'm a partner that focuses on federal and international tax. Hi, I'm Todd Bitor, an associate in the state and local tax practice. In this video, we discuss some of the state tax consequences and considerations of IRC Section 965. The first part uh, is an overview of Section 965 from a federal income tax perspective. Then we get into some specific considerations and then some examples of what states have done in response. Section 965 is the transition tax that imposes a tax on the previously deferred earnings of certain 10% owned foreign subsidiaries. The tax is imposed by increasing the subpart F income of the foreign subsidiaries under Section 965A, and the inclusion is generally treated the same as subpart F income. A reduced rate of tax of between 8 and 15.5% is applied to the inclusion. That's achieved by allowing a deduction for a portion of the inclusion under Section 965C. The effective rate depends on the amount of cash and deemed cash equivalents held by the foreign subsidiaries. The tax can be paid in installments over eight years, with the payments backloaded to the later years. Proposed regulations under Section 965 were introduced on August 1st that provide, among other things, that members of a consolidated group are treated as a single U.S. shareholder for purposes of certain calculations under Section 965. From a reporting perspective, the Section 965A inclusion and Section 965C deduction are not reflected in the Form 1120, but instead are reported on a separate Section 965 statement. The liability resulting from Section 965 is reflected on Schedule J and flows through to line 31 of the 1120. And so those considerations and layout of Section 965 that Aaron uh, discussed really goes into the main uh, relevant SALT considerations, specifically uh, the starting point for calculation of state taxable income, as Aaron stated, uh, the amounts under 965 do not go on to your 1120. Uh, in fact, it's a separate statement, which is the IRC 965 transition tax statement. Um, and so whether or not that amount uh, from the, the statement uh, thing pulls through to the 1120 for state tax purposes is one of the major considerations, as well as the state tax treatment of subpart F income and with that is how states treat subpart F income. So if it's going to be deducted, or if there's another subtraction, a modification for subpart F income, you would look to that guidance um, for treatment of section 965. Uh, other considerations are just you know, your general foreign commerce clause, uh, discriminate, discrimination uh, considerations, factor representation if such amounts are coming in, uh, and then your state income tax reporting methodology. Moving into some specific state examples. And while we can't give all states, um, you know, we've kind of highlighted uh, some of the major ones. The big focus of a group of states is that deduction that Aaron discussed in order to get to the effective tax rate. And that goes under 965C. And Connecticut, Idaho, New Jersey, and Oregon, for example, all require an add back of the, of the amount deducted under 965C. And then each state has varying um, guidance on whether or not their subpart F income uh, subtraction modification or other DRD applies to such dividends. Uh, for example, New Jersey uh, amended their law recently to now require or to limit the DRD to 95% of the dividends received. So therefore, you basically get a 5% inclusion of that 965A amount. Another example uh, are those states that basically have either fully decoupled from 965 and are not including the amounts or uh, are excluding them as just general subpart F uh, income or like New York as exempt CFC income. Uh, each state then has specific reporting requirements whether or not you are required to include that IRC section 965 statement with your state return or not. Uh, New York uh, recently issued guidance stating that taxpayers are required to add back um, the interest deductions related to that 965 inclusion amounts. Uh, so it's, it's really a mixed bag of what states are doing. In addition, as Aaron mentioned, there are uh, kind of this installment payment of eight years uh, with certain states uh, explicitly allowing it, uh, for example, Oklahoma and Utah, and then other states specifically stating that you're not allowed. Thank you very much for joining us. For more information on state tax considerations of Section 965 of the Internal Revenue Code and other bottom line videos, please access evershedz-sutherland.com.